and a very good afternoon. Welcome to this session on pre-vocational education. Now, I'm going to talk about the historical perspectives on work-based education in India, the pre-vocational education from classes 6 to 8 and vocationalization of education from classes 9 to 12. Now, what are the main objectives of this pre-vocational education program? To develop an understanding and perspective on the purpose of work experience and pre-vocational education program with specific reference to Samagri Siksha. The other objective is to identify the activities required to achieve the objectives of the pre-vocational education in upper primary or elementary schools. Now, Gandhiji, if we go back to the history and look what Gandhiji had said about education. He said, by education I mean an all-round development of the best in child and man, in body, mind and spirit. He talked about three H. That means head, heart and hand. So he wanted that our education system should be linked with the head, heart and hand. And that is why we need to promote vocationalization of education so that every child gets an opportunity to acquire skills and also of course the knowledge to get into the world of work, to do some kind of activity or perform certain tasks for their livelihood as well as they can fulfill their interests and aspirations. Now what Mahatma Gandhi said in 1937, he insisted that manual and productive work should find a place in examination. He also emphasized that the practical work should become part of our education system. That means the work-based education should be promoted. According to the National Policy on Education 1986, there is the need for introduction of systematic, well-planned and rigorously implemented programs of vocationalization of education, which is crucial for the proposed educational reorganization. Now let us try to understand what is work-based education. Work-based education or work-based learning refers to the learning that occurs through production of real goods and services, whether the work is paid or unpaid. So that means it's not necessary that the work that we do is being paid because there are some services like social services which are not really paid. So that means we are preparing people to work with hands for both service in different economic sectors or manufacturing or enterprises or we are also preparing people for the social service. Now when we talk of work based learning it will be divided into two places basically in schools that is the classroom and the workplace. Now, what are the different methods of work-based learning? Guest lectures by entrepreneurs, field visits, career day, students run enterprises. For example, students can run their own retail store or stationery store in the schools and then through that activity they can learn about business. Project related learning, mentoring, practical skills training, on the job training. So these are the different methods which can be employed to promote work-based learning. Now let us try to understand what do we mean by vocationalization of education. Vocationalization of education refers to efforts by schools to include in their curriculum those practical aspects or courses likely to generate among the students some kind of knowledge, skills and disposition that might prepare them to think of becoming skilled workers or take up other occupations. 
So what are we aiming through the vocationalization of education is to provide hands-on experience to the students besides the knowledge that they acquire through the general education. So that is why skills development becomes very important not only in schools but colleges, universities and other institutions like industrial training institutes, polytechnics. So in school when we talk about the vocationalization of education, there is a work experience uh, from classes 1 to 5 and then there is a pre-vocational education program which was going on earlier in classes 9th and 10th. Now we are taking it further down that is from classes 6 to 8 and then there is a vocational education program from classes 9 to 12. Now the vocationalization of education should be divided into three aspects. One is awareness, second is exploration and the third is preparation. Now we need to make our students aware about the various occupations and career options in the world of work. We also need to help our students to explore about what people do for their living. They should also need to understand what are the various tasks being performed by various professionals and middle level skilled workers in different occupations. We also need to prepare our students to participate in the activities that integrate academic skills with vocational skills. Now the focus is on outcome based education and training. If you look at this uh, slide, we talk about competency. Now competency means knowledge, skills and attitude. So we have to work through our education system on the development of students competencies so that they are, are able to apply their knowledge uh, with the skills that they have acquired. So that means what we are looking at is the, the students or the person should be able to perform. That means apply their knowledge and skills in a certain situation or for doing a particular task. So we are promoting now learning outcome based education. That means the students should be able to do. Now skill, what do we mean by skill? Skill is an ability to do an activity or job well especially because they have practiced it. Now skill standards. So we have to do certain activity on the basis of certain standards. So for example when we talk of typing, the typing speed matters. A student should be able to type at a speed of 40 words per minute or a 60 words per minute or 80 words per minute or 100 words per minute. So speed becomes the criteria for training as well as assessment. This is how we have to set standards and see that the training is done based on these standards. Now when we talk of skill development in India, there is a national policy for skill development and entrepreneurship uh, which was uh, uh, issued in uh, 2015. Then public private enterprises or partnerships, then national skill development corporation, sector skill councils and then we have vocational education and training under the national skill qualification framework. Now what are the different features of vocational education training system in India? It is an integrated system of vocationalization of education in schools and colleges. There are national occupation standards for the various job roles in different sectors and the curriculum is based on the learning outcomes. Now here you can see the national skill qualification framework. From level 1 to 4 you can see the students can study under the NSQF level 1 to 4 from classes 9 to 12. Then at level 5 there is a diploma, level 6 there is advanced diploma and level 7 is the degree. So there is a BWOC degree of, of 3 years for which students can enroll themselves and study 
for this particular degree for three years. Now, when we talk of the school education program, this is a pre-vocational education program from classes six to eight, and then the vocational education program from classes nine to 12. Now, when we uh, talk about pre-vocational education program from classes six to eight, it has been conceptualized under the Samagra Siksha as the integration of work-based activities with teaching learning processes rather than a separate add-on to the existing scheme of studies of education from classes six to eight. Now, when we say uh, what is the objective of this pre-vocational education program, then these are the objectives. Identify the productive activities, plan and organize productive work. Identify the tools, equipment and material used in the production of goods and services. Develop basic skills to observe, manipulate and participate in the work practice. Inculcate socially desirable values such as cooperativeness, teamwork, perseverance, tolerance, etc. And develop respect for manual work, that is the dignity of labor, which is very important. And it should come by working with hands. Now, general education teachers of languages, math, science, social science, art, music, and work experience can organize these skill-based activities in the school. Now, when we talk of the process or the steps that teachers can follow to teach these pre-vocational education activities, uh, you need to plan. As a teacher, you need to plan. You need to customize the activities. You also need to reflect upon the various aspects of the activities which have been organized as part of the pre-vocational education program. You need to ask the students to perform those activities and learn science, maths, art, or any other aspect from those activities. And then the connection, that means they need to connect those activities with the various occupations uh, in the world of work. So that is how you need to organize these pre-vocational activities. Then during these activities, you can focus on the various soft skills, which include communication skills, interpersonal skills, problem solving skills, analytical skills, logical reasoning. These are the various soft skills which you can integrate while teaching these activities. Now I'll just uh, quickly give you an idea in the various sectors how you can organize these pre-vocational activities. Say for example, agriculture. Now, in agriculture, you can conduct activities like soil testing, uh, identification of common pests and diseases, raising of seedlings and plants in nurseries, vegetative propagation of plants, mushroom cultivation, vermicompost production, for example. So, because uh, you must have seen that there are a lot of uh, dry leaves uh, around in your schools, which you can collect and prepare compost or vermicompost using earthworms. Uh, now, in animal husbandry, you can do milking of dairy animals, beekeeping, silkworm rearing, fish rearing, and similar activities related to goat, piggery, and all. There are host of activities which you can organize in animal husbandry. Now, in food manufacturing and processing, for example, making bakery and confectionery products, biscuits, cakes, muffles, all these things you can prepare. Making jam, jelly, ketchup, pickles, then preparation of milk products like khoa, ghee, butter, all these things can be prepared through these activities. Paperwork, origami for example. So, students can be asked to do book binding. They can prepare best out of waste using different materials. They can do toy making, for example, dolls. Then they can also make uh, materials out of paper mache, paper bags, inserting name slips into ID tags. That will also help students to learn 
uh, soft skills, paper filing work, and making envelopes and boxes. First aid activities can be also organized at pa as part of this uh, pre-vocational education program. So they can prepare first aid kit, dressing of wounds and bandages. Now I have given you a template uh, of how you can plan those activities. So uh, you need to write down the activity, then the skills that you are aiming at, and then the learning outcomes. So this is the template which you can utilize for planning your activities. Now in this session we are going to have uh, one activity on who am I. So you can give uh, the sentences which actually help the students to learn about the various occupations. So I'll be telling you more in detail. We'll have an act activity here right now. Then group discussions you can organize on the various occupations, the tasks being performed by the middle level skilled workers uh, like that. And then uh, you can have, uh, you can connect those skill based activities with the general academic subjects like science, maths, arts, social science. And you, then you can have some reflective questions. So for example, what do you understand by work experience? Give your responses. What is the need for work experience program? Like that you can ask many questions to the students. In this session what we are going to do is uh, I have given you uh, papers. Now this is about occupations, the different occupations that they are available in the world of work. So I am going to read out one of these uh, occupations and then you can see how you can also teach about these occupations in your classes. So similarly, when we are talking of pre-vocational education, the teachers would be required to expose the children about the various occupations in the world of work. And also the task being performed by these various people. Say for example, hairdresser. What a hairdresser does? He or she cuts the hair, designs the hair, do shampooing and all those things. Similarly, beauty therapist. So what he or she does, provide therapy and also does manicure, pedicure, makeup, all these things are performed by a beauty therapist or an assistant beauty therapist. So you would be exposing the students about the plethora of choices that are available in the world of work. So you all have this sheet. Now I'll be. Uh, reading out the sentence and you tell me the answer. I grow and maintain crops for food production. I am a farmer. Very good. I cook food for the people. I am a chef. Very good. I take care of the patient in the hospital. I am a nurse. I teach students in a school. I am a teacher. Very good. I build nesting areas for bees and collect their honey. I am a beekeeper. Very good. I work in the theater. I am an artist. artist. Very good. I handle all the cash transactions of a bank. Can I am a I am responsible for the installation, modification, maintenance and repair of plumbing fixtures for drainage and water systems. I am a plumber. Very good. I specialize in the design, construction and repair of structures using wooden raw materials and implements. I am a very good. I create animated creatures for games and animation industry. I am a animator. I deliver goods to the customers at the doorstep. I am a delivery boy. Yes. I use a variety of materials and techniques to create art for sale and exhibition. I am a craftsman. Yes. I create clothing accessories and footwear. I sketch designs, select fabrics and patterns and oversee their products creation. I am a fashion designer. Fashion designer. Yes. I create 
visual concepts using computer software or by hand to communicate ideas that inspire, inform and captivate consumers. They develop the overall layout and production design for applications such as advertisements, brochures, magazines and reports. I am a graphic designer. graphic designer, yes. I make indoor spaces functional, safe and beautiful by determining space requirements and selecting essential and decorative items such as colors, lighting and materials. I am a interior, interior decorator, very good. So give a clap to yourself. Now, when we expose our children to these plethora of choices, then they realize that it is not only the engineers and doctors' occupations or professions which are available in the world of work. They will realize that there are so many occupations. So, same way you need to write such sentences for a variety of other occupations which are available in the world of work. And tell your students that you don't have to just vouch for becoming engineers or doctors but there are a whole lot of other occupations for which you can study acquire skills or competencies and earn your livelihood don't just look for the jobs also look for self-employment you can become entrepreneurs you can start your own enterprise so these are the various activities that you can organize as part of the pre-vocational education program. Now I have given you the rough papers. You can see the rough paper with you? Yes, sir. Now using these rough papers, you will make something out of it, such as aeroplane, boat, or anything that you learned in your primary school. You also learn poems. Say for example, Baba Baba Black Sheep, have you any? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Utho lala baakhe kholo, paani lai humu dholo, biti raat kaval dal phule. So those poems you must have all mugged up, but you might not be remembering right now. But whatever you have learned by doing, you must have all been remembering that, and you can use those skills. Right? Say for example, paperwork. You must have all done some paperwork. Origami, what we call. Now just give a try and see how much you remember. And we'll see that what are the different items that you have prepared out of this paper. this kind of bag, small bag he has prepared a paper for making paper bags, for selling some chana jor garam, isn't it? Very good, give a clap, very nice, you can teach other teachers also about this, right? Now, yeah, fan, so if it is too hot, you can make your own paper fan and very good, very good. These are the different items one can prepare uh, as part of the pre-vocation. Not only this, but also activities like composting, vermicompost, mushroom cultivation, beekeeping, book binding, tie and dye. These are the various pre-vocational activities that you can do in schools. Yeah, boat. Very good. See, you can, the boat you have prepared. So I think you all deserve a big round of applause. Very good. Are you teaching drawing? Yes or no? Yes. What about IT teachers? Are you teaching some drawing on? You are preparing some models. Chart preparation. Role play. Okay. Quiz competition also you are
ओके ओके फाइन सो आर यू टीचिंग देम डिजाइन एस्पेक्ट्स रिलेटेड टू ऑटोमोबाइल ओके वेरी गुड ओके वेरी गुड इंडस्ट्री और एनी मार्केट प्लेस कम बैक एंड डू सम प्रोजेक्ट टू सॉल्व दो प्रॉब्लम दैट्स अ वेरी गुड आइडिया सो दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग अप्रोच यू कैन प्रोमोट इन स्कूल सो दैट द स्टूडेंट्स लर्न थ्रू solutions to the problems so what they will work on they will try to find out solutions to a variety of problems that exist in the world of work so they will become troubleshooters they can take up maintenance work they can take up designing work and obviously some kind of production and services that they are already doing in the world of work so we need to expose them to a variety of choices available in the world of work that's about vocationalization of education so thank you and a big round of applause